Hi, my name is Janet Smith. I'm an online tutor and I specialize in working with students who have dyslexia. And I'm here in doing a series about tips for tutoring online. So in my last video I talked about using Zoom as a platform and why I use it. And this time I want to share with you what settings I use in Zoom that work well for tutoring. So I've opened to my profile page and you would do the same in yours by just putting in your email and password. And now I'm going to my meeting settings and all I'm going to do is scroll down and share the settings I use and tell you a little bit about why I find them helpful and all of these things are optional. You can decide if that would make sense for you. So first, uh, the top one is host video, start meetings with the video, my video on, and also with the participants video on. And I have both of those selected so that as soon as you and your student connect, you'll see each other. And it'll it usually, by default, is a full screen video. Then under audio type, it's important to pre-select computer audio simply because if you don't, every time you sign on or your student signs on, it will ask you what kind of audio you want to use. And if your student doesn't know what to do or what to select, you won't be able to hear them. And the same would be true for you. And so it eliminates that step and makes it a little more seamless. Then join before host. I do not have that on because I had mentioned in my previous video that I use the same meeting ID number every single time. So if that, since that's the case, um, my students could literally pop into that room day or night um, and possibly when I'm tutoring someone else, if they were allowed to join the room um, when I wasn't even there. So I have that turned off. Um, Use personal meeting ID when starting a meeting. That's what I talked about in the previous video. You're assigned a personal meeting ID and you can elect to have that used and that be your meeting ID number every single time. And for the reasons I explained more there, I do that. And then going down to in meeting, I have chat and private chat on. So I will just tell you personally, I virtually never use that. I ask my students to keep a charged cell phone or landline right next to the computer. So if we can't hear any, each other, we simply call each other to work out whatever glitch is going on. And I'm going to scroll down some other things that aren't relevant for tutoring. Here's a personal preference, always show meeting control toolbar. And when you're in a Zoom meeting, there's a toolbar that's at the top of the screen, but it will retract unless you put your cursor nearby to use it. But if you want it to always be down so you can see it, you can select that. That's just a personal preference. Show Zoom windows during screen share. My student can see the Zoom windows if I want to demonstrate how they can check their own Zoom. Um, controls. And then I want to be able to allow them to use the Zoom annotation to draw or write or type and to use the whiteboard that I'm sharing in order to draw, write, or type. Um, because Zoom has a whiteboard, but also you may have another teaching platform with a whiteboard like Wizimo. But if you ever want to use the Zoom one, I have that on so that we can do that. And very important, you want to allow sharing of remote control so that when you bring, you open up something on your computer, whether it's a worksheet or words to divide or wisdom tiles or whatever you are sharing that you want your student to actually do, if you share control, they can type or write or divide or move things on your screen. And that's a huge part of being able to tutor online. This is also a big reason I do not use Skype. A lot of people say, why don't you just use Skype? It's a lot. Everyone knows about that. But Skype does not allow you to share control. You would have to get a separate program for screen sharing 
and for sharing control, where Zoom has it all included in the same platform. So moving down farther, again, a lot of things that aren't necessarily relevant for tutoring. Until I come to screen sharing, I want to be able to share my screen and all my teaching materials and everything that I want the student to see. So that is definitely selected and turned on. And then one of my favorite things that I discovered more recently is the waiting room. And when you turn this on, if you're meeting with your student and you're waiting for them to sign on, when they do sign on, instead of popping immediately into your room and seeing each other, you get a notification that says so-and-so is in the waiting room. And you can either allow them to come in or you can um, deny or decline allowing them to come in. And that is really important if you're tutoring with one student and another student tries to sign on early, they can't, they won't pop into your meeting. You can just decline when you see that notification and keep them out of your room. So that's one of my favorite new things that I discovered. And the final one on this page that I use, I turn on notify host when participants join meeting before them. So my phone is always right next to my computer and maybe it's five minutes before we're, I'm about to meet with a student and I get a little notification on my phone that so-and-so has is waiting for me to let them into the meeting room. So that lets me know, oh, my student is waiting and it's just a nice piece of information and it's a nice tool to have if a student claims they're signing on but you don't see that, then something's going wrong. Um, where they're not actually signing on. So it's a good tool to have just to give you a little information. All right, so those are my basic settings for tutoring. And maybe you have your own settings that you've discovered or things that you do that I haven't mentioned. If you do, please share them in the comments below because I'm always learning and it's great for everybody to learn um, all the options that are out there. So thanks so much, and I look forward to sharing more in future videos.